guys, Artosis here, casting some CMSL Season 4. This is from the round of 16 in Group B. It's a best of one between Sock, our Terran player, a very strong one. I'll talk more about him momentarily. And G-H-K-D-L-X-L-D-G-O-Q-H-W-K, also known as Miso, a very aggressive Zerg player. A, a very strong Zerg player overall, in my opinion. I think he's underrated and kind of teased by the other pros. But uh, definitely a strong one. Keep your eye on this guy uh, when he's in practice, when he's in form. Um, but let's talk about Sock for a moment. Because I think he's a lesser known Terran. Unless you're really hardcore into studying Terran players. But he's an old SKT Terran. And I think he's a really smart player as well while he's not really a player you expect to win a championship or anything like that uh he's done a lot of inventing for Terran uh he is someone that has always been a highly technical Terran player you know we have all sorts of different types of Terran players we have players that really rely on great micro really rely on great macro or great decision making solid plays uh but Sock is very highly technical. This is a guy who kind of has pioneered a lot of things like 111, Goliath build, 5 factory macro builds in TVP, that type of thing. So, should be interesting to see how he does here against someone who is generally highly aggressive. Uh, Miso is a player that is much more likely to go super aggro with slightly off strategies, whether it's like a Guardian Rush or a two hatch lurker type of play. But I think that a, a player like Sock will do all right against that because he is a technical player, right? A lot of the players that play a little bit off uh, have a harder time when they're playing against someone who plays a little bit off, if that makes sense, right? If you're going to play aggressively, it's going to be kind of meta aggression where you're, you're ready to strike down very standard, very normal plays. Now, I'm not saying that Sock won't do something standard or normal. Like, for instance, it looks like he's just going to go for a fast command center here, which most likely will go into bio play. But a lot of the time, he will do things like a quick factory, right? And go into, like, a wraith and expansion at the same time. So we'll see about that. He has scouted Miso, who's going for a two-hatch play. Uh, this means that we should be seeing the layer just momentarily, right around three minutes as this pops open. Uh, Sock, on the other hand, has gone for a 15 command center, so uh, just a very, very fast expansion. It's the fastest expansion that's relatively safe, and on a two-player map, it's very, very safe because you can always check if a Zergling Rush is coming. Gets a little bit more dangerous if you don't scout them first on other maps. So makes uh, a depot here. Kind of making mostly a wall. There is a little bit of a hole here. Uh, and there's the second barracks and the gas. So it does look like it's going to be a pretty regular bio base play. So Marine Medic coming out of Sock, which again, I mean, it's it's not like he can't play like this. He's very good at like this. It's just not uh, what you see. A, 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 it's not what he's known for, I guess, is the way to put it. All right, so Miso right now, he does have that layer. Uh, it's coming right along. Should be finishing just around four minutes. And we'll see if he wants to go for a Hydralis Den really soon, but more likely it should just be a Spire. Sock with some very good scouting, getting this SCV back into check. And when you get in here and see the layer popping and uh, no Hydralis Den as of yet, you know that it's going to be Mutalisks. And there is the Spire. Miso just throws it down. No sense in trying to hide it here. This SCV is high health, and he's going to figure out what's going on. All right, so two Hatchery Muta against just a pretty standard... Uh, Terran Bio opening. Now, his barracks are split up. He does have this little wall, which allows him to play a little bit more greedily. He doesn't have to make a bunker or anything, but that can make him a little bit weaker against incoming Mutalisks, right? This is just another area that can be harassed. Obviously, you need to defend this area. Obviously, you need to defend this area around the main command center. And then you also have to defend your barracks. But now this is a fourth area. Generally, there's three areas when you're playing as bio that you need to defend. And here there's four. So we'll see what Sock does to defend uh, a little bit stronger there. And then, of course, over on Miso's side, does he try to abuse that heavily? Is he going to stay on Mutalisks for a long time and try to get that damage in? Well, he's taking a third hatchery here. 
Uh, this is a gas base, so of course that's where he wants to take it. Uh, this third that's a little bit closer is actually mineral only, so Zerg is completely uninterested in this against Terran, unless we go extremely late into the game. Now, Sock has his engineering bay finishing up, so we can get some turrets started. Has uh, Looks like he already has range on the way, already finished stim, so nice and quick on that. Just zoning out any Zerglings here with the Marine Medic, making Miso think that maybe, just maybe he'll attack, but we know that he won't. Doesn't have anything coming quickly enough. Triple turret at the natural, really nice. You definitely need about three to four turrets uh, at the natural against two hatchery mutalisks, otherwise they're just going to bust you. And he's going to float his barracks back. So that means that this depot may be something that's uh, picked off in a little bit here. We'll see how the game progresses, but doesn't look like he's going to put a lot of defense into this area. All right, the first couple of mutas flying in. Not too many as of yet. And we do see the carapace upgrade. So definitely some prolonged mutalisk play. But since it's not attack, it doesn't seem like it'll be all in Muta, but that's kind of a stylistic thing. Some players do go for the Carapace uh, and stay on Muta the whole time, whereas some more aggressive players will just go for the attack. All right, some good turret placement. He already has his range. He already has his stim. <laughs> I love that he's attacking the spore. <laughs> Zerg, uh, Zerg at war with himself here. Not his spore, just a neutral one that helps the creep to actually grow to the front ramp. For anyone wondering what that's there for, this hatchery gets extra creep be because of that, and it allows Zerg to actually defend a natural expansion correctly. Another very clever thing that map makers have figured out within Brood War. All right, so the Mutas just kind of uh, flying around looking for a way in, looking for a way to deal some damage. Sock very good on his defense so far, but Miso getting up, getting a few free kills. Notice there was no real anti-air here, so he got a bunch of Marine kills just taking some damage on his Mutas. Sock going up to four barracks, adding that factory as well with really good timing. Up to five turrets here. So you can see he's really serious about defending this base. I love the play. Uh, definitely going to keep him a lot safer in that area. The Marines plus the turrets doing a good job of zoning the mutas out of really flying into the main. To get to that main base on damage, you'd have to fly way around the map like this. And even then, he's building some extra turrets. Sock does not want to deal with this mutilist harassment. Now we should check what Miso is up to because it's not just harassing the mutas, even though we see most of his actions are put in over here as he continues to produce. But he's going up to the hive. Does he have any other tech here? We don't see any. So it does look like it's probably a guardian rush. And of course, that's something that uh, I talked about at the very beginning. This is something that Miso does like to do. It's not that popular amongst pros, but it is definitely usable. It is definitely a viable strategy. All right, it looks like he's up over 12 meters there. So that kind of lends to what we're thinking he's going to be doing. Picks off a lot of medics. That was really well done. The medics are definitely the prime target if you can pick them off. They take longer to make. They cost that extra gas. And they're really what gives stability to that Marine force. All right, and look at this. He's actually just going to dive onto this group, but more units coming over to try to help. Ends up losing maybe four mutas during all this, but he has reduced the Marine count quite a bit. Continuing to fight, just heads up here. He has that plus one carapace, so I guess he likes his odds, and in fact, he will clear Sock's entire army. Sock now is going triple starport. That's a pretty normal counter to the Guardians. We're going to see him pump out wraiths as quickly as he can and get cloak for those. Starting to throw down some extra turrets around his barracks as well. I mean, Miso getting on top of the production. This is making me think that Sock is in for a lot of trouble. He does have this little group of Marines, but Mutas are just so efficient in these spots. Really, against this many plus one carapace Mutas, you want to have more than 12 Marines plus three, four medics to fight them off. Some Zerglings rallying up right now as well. That Greater Spire still being made about halfway done. So Sox, Sox still has some time uh, to get anti-Guardian tech, but really it's the Mutas themselves that are starting to kill him. Miso taking another base of fourth gas during this time. That'll give him the gas that kind of puts you over the top where you can kind of finish a Terran off then. Killing off these few turrets that are trying to, again, zone the Mutas out of this area. Sox started to gain a decent Wraith count with the three star ports all pumping. A good amount of Marines being made as well. He does have that plus one attack. 
Oh, no. Look at this. His mute is going to try to hold the ramp here against those Marines while the Lings come in to deal damage to his expansion. Turrets do not hit Lings. And look at this. Beautiful micro from Miso. Being so efficient on this ramp. Sock having a very hard time there, losing a bunch of SCVs uh, defending. Now, the Greater Spire is done. At any moment now, we could see him start to make some Guardians. And in fact, pulling back these Hurt Ones, he will morph them first. Some more Lings trying to get in for harassment at that natural, but Sock taking this moment without the Mutalisks there to get to the high ground. Muta's flying in to harass a bit. Yeah, these are both Guardians being produced. Don't forget, he might end up making some Devourers to help with the Wraith count, but honestly, he has enough Mutas that I'm not too afraid. Yeah, he makes a single one. Uh, Devourers, you don't necessarily need a lot to fight Wraiths, but one or two will really gunk things up. They'll prevent them... Uh, a lot of the time from their cloak because of the splashed acid spores, but also they add so much damage. It's kind of like a debuff on armor. All right, here we go. The Wraith's coming in, targeting these down. A lot of Ling's coming in as well. The Medic's actually blocking very well. And Sox Wraith's, I think, are just barely going to clean this up. Yeah, the Mutas have to run away. More Marines coming out and trying to target down the Devourer, but Devourers actually have a lot of armor, as you can see. Two starting armor, unable to take that down. And just the Mutas flying in. The Guardians have done almost zero this game other than force him to make some Wraiths. All right, more Marines being rallied out. This is just a never-ending rally of an attack from Miso. Like, all game long, he has been on Sock's back. <laughs> and, uh... Keeping him in this defensive posture, Sok has not been able to walk across the map at all here to do any counter pressure. Miso just staying on top of things, popping out a few more Guardians. This is going to force the Wraiths to come forward. They haven't been all fully repaired yet. And with some more Devourers on the way, it's going to be really hard for them to actually fight. And the Guardians putting a clock here onto Sok. Muta's killing some SCVs as they retreat. He's just giving up his natural expansion, realizing, you know what? He needs to kill the entire army. If he can kill this entire army, he can actually still win this game. Because there's not a lot else going on. It's not like he has great upgrades. He has no lurkers to fall back onto. It's just what you see is what you get here from Miso. He is pretty much all in. Even though he's on four gases at this point, he has to get a killing move. And you can see he does have more workers and everything. But cost efficiency-wise... If Sok kills this off, like, I don't think his army can be killed anymore. This is getting too scary, though. You definitely have to give a huge edge here to me. So I think it's going to come down to just how he engages and the Wraith Micro from Sok. Does he have good enough Wraith Micro to pick off all of these Mutas as well as the Devourers? I like that he skipped Cloak because Cloak really not going to work out. There's plenty of Overlords here. Again, the Acid Spores help out with that as well. All right, here he comes, coming in to Micro. Looks like he's going to dive on top of the Guardians. He wants to kill those Guardians off so his Marines can actually fight everything else. A good choice. He knows he can't kill the Devourers with these Wraiths. Instead, going hard after the Guardians. But holding at the ramp is exactly where Miso needs to do it. The Marines not able to get any sort of surface area. Only a few fighting at once, and that is it. Sock's going to call it GG. Miso takes him out in the first game.